warm welcome to all of you. And I'm really happy to meet you here in Reutlingen. And I'm happy that I may give you some information about Bosch, about Industry 4.0, and of course about semiconductor production. My name is Peter Busek. I'm responsible here in this plant for Department of IT and Automation. This is everything, not the office IT, what we call it, but everything production-related IT and automation solutions. Sorry for this. Today I would like to give you some introduction about Industry 4.0 in general, in the aspects Bosch is working in. I would like to give you some impressions what we in Reutlingen are doing in Industry 4.0 and especially the relationship between semiconductor production and Industry 4.0. For this first, I would like to mention the so-called Internet of Things and Services. I have pointed out two key figures. The one is the number or the amount of connected people worldwide. In 1995, there have been connected 40 million people. Our estimations see for 2020 7 billion connected people. So this is really a strong increase. In 1997, we had 6 million computers on the internet. In 2020, we see estimations of 50 billion connected things. Not computers, but things. So therefore, it's the internet of things and services. We are talking about. You can see here the Internet of Things and Services in several areas. Of course, mobility, the cars industry is one area of the Internet of Things and Services. The household, by cleaning machines and so on, the area of energy solutions, and of course, industry. All these areas will be part of the Internet of Things and Services and the Industry 4.0 of course is located in this industry sector. But what is Industry 4.0? What is the definition? Industry 4.0 means the fusion of the real world, the physical world, and the virtual or the data world. It is as well the connection of objects between each other. So machine to machine, object to object has to be connected. Industry 4.0 as well is the distribution of intelligence. So we have not one local in intelligence, but we have distributed intelligence. And of course, Industry 4.0 is something what we call individual. The customers are in our focus and we have different customers, so different customers have different requirements. Industry 4.0 is talking about individualized customer requests. This is called Industry 4.0 because we can talk about several steps of industry. The Industry 1.0 was the so-called mechanization of things. Industry 2.0, electrification. Then we have the digitalization. And now in the fourth step, we are connecting existing things. And this is the so-called Industry 4.0, the connection of things and services. We as Bosch identified seven features, seven key features of Industry 4.0. 
from the top to the bottom and from left to the right, fast integration and flexible configuration of things is one feature Industry 4.0 has to provide. And this is possible with open standards. We are talking about distributed intelligence, as I mentioned before. We are talking, and therefore this is in the middle, of people as key players. The industry 4.0 should serve the people. And we are talking about virtual real-time representation. So that the computer or the connected industry every at every time knows what is happening in the real world. We are talking as well about something like the secure value creation network. It should be protected, the data should be protected to outside. The data have to be integer. And of course we are talking about something like the digital life cycle management. I will come back to these seven features later when I explain our way we are doing this here at Bosch in Reutlingen. This is some short overview and I just will give some short impression what is the main message. Industry 4.0 is an activity starting beginning of 2013 and you can see the way it's, it's dealt in several um, platforms. Bosch decided beginning 2013 the dual strategy, I will come back to this later. We started some project, we started this innovation cluster where all Industry 4.0 experts inside Bosch can talk to each other and we can exchange solutions and we can put our brains together to optimize all the solutions. And here on the bottom you can simply see some, some awards we already gained for our activities. This is the shop floor of the future. We can see some machines, we can see people, we can see the connection, the connecting connection between all the machines and the services and we want to provide something like this and you can see this here in Reutling. What I would like to mention is that or come back to this dual strategy from Bosch. Bosch sees itself as lead provider and lead operator. Lead provider means that we have different parts of Bosch, business sections of Bosch, which, which provide solutions for industry. So we are able to sell solutions, products for the industry to realize Industry 4.0. So this is our sales business, let's say. But of course we are doing Industry 4.0 by our own in different plants. For example, in this plant, you are just currently sitting in. So this is our plant, and we see ourselves as lead operator for Industry 4.0 solutions, and this is the main topic of our tour today. And so again, welcome in Reutlingen, our plant in the afternoon or in the early evening, very nice and very impressive and I would like to talk to you about some solutions of Industry 4.0 in the semiconductor business. Just on a schematic way, I would like to mention the first thing what we have done here. We have taken into account our complete production area with several equipments and the wafer lots. So this is a kind of carrier containing 25 wafers. You will have a better look on this later. So we have a lot of equipments, a lot of lots, and all these lots, all these equipments, all necessary information and data we have put into a virtual world. 
This virtual world is containing all process flows from more than thousand different products. It contains all lots, all lot information, and we have thousands of lots. And of course, the complete history is in as well. We know exactly when which lot has been processed on which equipment. And all the equipments are inside as well. So we are talking about tons of data here. And I'm really proud to say that we are not doing this just for this building. We have connected all buildings at the site in Wolfingen, and we connected some other plants as well into this virtual world. For example, in Hungary, in China, in Australia. And all this is our so-called international production network, and this is completely modeled by the IT in this virtual world. But up to this point, the virtual world and the real world are existing in parallel. To bring the virtual world to life, we have to connect this. Therefore, we did two steps. The first step, so-called cyber-physical system, is the equipment integration. We added some a small piece of software to every equipment and by this the equipment is connected to the counterpart in the virtual world and by this we can give commands to the equipment and the equipment can send information into our cloud as well we have a second cyber physical system we connected all lots with the counterparts in the virtual world. And for this we use the RFID technology so that we know and every time where exactly the products are physically located. The next step is that we brought our equipments to talk to each other. You can imagine like this, one lot is processed on equipment number one. The equipment number two is a measurement equipment. And this second equipment can see some parameters, can make a measurement and can say, okay, it is in spec, but we can do it a little bit better. So, this data are given back, feedback, to the run-to-run -run calculator and this machine is calculating the exact optimized production parameter for this first equipment for the next lot. So, therefore, this is the so-called feedback. And in other equipment types, we have the feed-forward loop. Equipment number one is doing the first process. Equipment number two is measuring. The measurement data sent via the calculator to the third equipment and we can have here optimized production parameters. Examples for this we will show later to you when we are walking around the production site. And the last use case I would like to show you today is the so-called real-time dispatcher. What is a solution for nearly every equipment type we are using? Normally, the operator has the problem to make the decision which lot which is waiting before an equipment is now the best or the next to use. And normally, there is only one rule he can follow the so-called FIFO, first in, first out, or some other requirements, but only one rule he can follow. If there is a second rule, for example, a phone call from the customer, he cannot follow two rules. But we have one calculator who knows all equipments, all lots, all production steps, the complete situation, and we can have input from different rules 
like line balancing, like customer priorities, like quality reasons, and so on, delivery days. And all these are taken together into account, and the result is so-called dispatch list, and the operator gets a clear picture and advice what is next what. All together, I pointed out these seven principles I mentioned before, and you can see that we, with the examples I have shown, we can we can follow and serve all these these features. But now, I would like to invite you for a short walk. It will be approximately 40 minutes. We will see some things about the building itself. We will see some things about the semiconductor production and we will see the connection between semiconductor production and industry 4.0. Mm -hmm. For this I would like to invite you to be parted in the two groups, the two buses mm -hmm. again. Mr. Weinziel, my colleague, will take the first group and please the rest, the second bus, please follow me and yes, please enjoy the walk. Can we leave things here? Can we leave things here?